Hi, I'm Paul, KB5MU. Today we're going to be winding the coils for the RF bit banger. We're going according to batch one, the September 2023 release of the RF bit banger. This device you see on the screen is a prototype, but it's very similar to the batch one board. There are six coils on the main board. This one and this one, that's L4 and L6, are simple coils. Whereas these four, T1, T2, T3, and T4, are transformers, meaning they have more than one winding. For now, we're going to concentrate on having a simple winding. Here on the filter board, we have two coils, L1 and L3. And you can see those are made on a, a larger coil form. These are the two kinds of coil forms that we're going to use in this project. The smaller one is a FT37-43, and the larger one is a T50-6. The smaller ones are used on the main board, and the larger ones are used on the filter board. We're going to use one of the larger ones for this demonstration because it's easier to see on screen. Okay, here's my T50-6 core and my pre-cut piece of wire. I'm going to build a simple coil for one of the filter boards. This one has five turns. So I'll start by running the wire through most of the way until about an inch and a half or four centimeters of wire is left. Now I'll take this and wind it around. I'm pulling a little bit but not super hard just so that it conforms to the shape of the, of the core, like so. And now I'm going to run the wire through a second time. That's turn two. And pull it tight. Again, not too tight, but just snug. And then repeat. Turn three. I find it useful to say the turn numbers out loud so I don't lose track. Turn four. and turn five. And that's all the turns I need on this one. It needs to go to two diagonally opposite places on the coil to match the layout of the circuit board. So I will bend it down on one side and then make a little stair step and bend it down on the other side. It's hard to see with my fingers in the way. Now you can see that I've got extra wire here. I just cut that off to make two approximately equal leads to go through the circuit board and solder down. All that's left is to strip these so that they can be soldered because this red stuff is enamel and is designed to be an insulator. So there are lots of different ways to do this. Probably the the most accessible way is to use a knife like this hobby knife here and just scrape. If you scrape gently and dragging the knife away from the, the blade edge, you can scrape that insulation right off without damaging the copper. You have to go several different orientations to get every different part of the wire, but you can see it's turning shiny shiny copper colored instead of shiny red. That means that the insulation has been removed successfully. And I don't need to strip it all the way to the end because this part's just going to hang out until I trim it off after soldering. So I just need to make sure it's stripped right here near the body of the toroid because that's where the circuit board is going to be right here next to the toroid. And then do the other side Again, with it formed the way it's going to have to be to fit through the circuit board. Strip this part, trim here, and I'm done. You drop it into the circuit board, polarity doesn't matter, and solder. Trim the leads, and you're done with the coil. Now this is just a simple coil. All the ones on the filter boards are simple coils. And two of the ones on the main board are simple coils, but the other four are transformers. And that just means they have more than one winding. 
So let's build T1 or T2. They're identical. Starts with the smaller core. And three 10 centimeter lengths of wire. So there's one. Two. Yeah. Not important that it be precise. Three. Okay. Three lengths of wire. Now I'm going to hold these in one hand so that they don't move. And I'm going to twist on the other end so that all three of these end up wound around each other. I don't need to go very tight. Get up. Get up a little closer here. I'm trying to make it smooth and continuous all the way down. Fighting with the focus, sorry. And from here, we just pretend like it's a wire. Here's my core. Put the wire through. Leave a bit hanging out. And then wrap. And this coil calls for, check the table, five turns. So that's one, two, three, It needs to go all the way around. Four. And five. Stretch them out so that they cover the whole diameter whole circumference of the device. Okay, now on each side we've got three individual wires. We need to untwist them and make sure they're all separate enough so that they won't short together once I strip them. Now what I don't know yet is whether these wires are in the right order. Okay, let's strip these all the way up to where they're gonna need to be soldered. Okay, having stripped the wires I've bent the leads out to the sides for video purposes so you can see what I'm doing. And my goal is to make sure that these three wires and these three wires are connected so that these two are connected, these two are connected, and these two are connected. And there's no shorts. So let's see. I've got a meter set up to beep. So if I test from here to here, that's good. I'm lucky on that. So from here to here, no connection. From here to here, no connection. So I'm guessing these two are crossed. Yeah, so all I need to do is swap either these two or these two, and I should be good. So let's try that. I'm going to swap these two looking at the orientation of the wire so that it uh, looks like there's less chance for the short if I turn in that direction. Now I'm lay, lay it back down and see if I got it right. So these two should still be connected. Good. And these two should still be connected. And these two should still be connected. Okay, that's good. And no shorts there. Stay still. Beep. 
no shorts there. So this coil is ready to go into the board. Here we are on a batch one board. And this area here is the layout for T2. The layout for T1 is over there and it's very similar. So you can see it's drawn. So one winding is supposed to go from here to here, one winding from here to here, and one winding from here to here, just the same way we laid out the toroid. So if I took my toroid and put it down on top of that, you can see exactly what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to get this wire to go through that hole, this wire through that hole, this wire through that hole, and so on, in such a way that there's no shorts. Okay, now I've arranged the wires so that they're more or less parallel. The three on one side are not shorting to each other, and they're at a reasonable spacing compared to the circuit board. And then the same thing of the three on the other side down here. Okay. So these wires are all in their holes. And these wires are in their holes. So you'll just wiggle the whole thing down. Pull them all down. Gently. But firmly until they're snug to the board and then I'm bending them off to one side to keep them in place. Alright, let's look at the other side. These need to be tugged a little bit tighter. So you can see the wires come out separately so they're not shorting and go through their three respective holes. And the same thing on the other side. If we look at the flip side of the board, you can see I've got them bent off to one side so that they don't move too easily. And now I can just solder them in place. Now, a final check that I didn't screw any of this up. Okay, they all go through the right holes. Yay! The same procedure applies for T1 and T2. T4 is the same, only two wires and seven turns instead of three wires and five turns. Now T3 is very much the same as a normal coil, simple coil between these two. And then a single piece of wire goes from this hole to this hole through the middle of the toroid. Let me show you. 13 centimeters of wire. Okay, now we need five turns. So there's one, two, three, four, five. nice and snug trim insert through the board Snug. Both leads. Now I just need a wire to connect from this hole over here to this hole over here. So I start with a scrap of wire, like so. It's going to need to be stripped on both ends. And then on the other end, with a section in the middle, I'm just going to eyeball 
how long this section is. It needs to be about yay long. Okay, so now I have my piece of wire. With the insulated section in the middle and strip sections on the other ends. And now I just run it through the core and into the hole on one side up to where I stripped. And I'll capture that with my thumb on the back of the board here. And then I'll bend the wire around so that it goes through the other hole. It's not electrically important that this be tight, but if it's tight, it helps hold down the core. So on the bottom of the board, we now have all four leads, two from the coil and two from the single uh, wire link. Solder them and we're done with this transformer, P3.